Hey, Steve Stresky here, as always, Canadian Real Estate Market Update with a particular focus on Vancouver. If you're getting sort of value or entertainment out of these videos, all I ask you to hit thumbs up and subscribe. Questions, comments, put those below. Uh, I want to touch this week on the old adage, which is never let a good crisis go to waste. Uh, certainly what we have on our hands here today. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion going on amongst policymakers about the quote unquote, the great reset. Um, so if you aren't familiar with that, there's a lot of... Uh, debate going on, particularly at the World Economic Forum, uh, World Economic Conference, uh, in which these policymakers are basically lamenting about the Great Reset, of how this is the opportunity uh, of our generation to basically hit the reset button and change a lot of governing policies in terms of how fiscal fiscal spending works. Uh, we can talk about the role of digital currencies. Uh, the head of the IMF said this is the our Bretton Woods moment, which is basically uh, you know, an opportunity to basically rearrange the, 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 the global payment system. So these are massive, massive changes. Uh, and we actually had Justin Trudeau out this past week confirming nonetheless of the Great Reset. Building back better means getting support to the most vulnerable while maintaining our momentum on reaching the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the SDGs. Canada is here to listen and to help. This pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. This is our chance to accelerate our pre-pandemic efforts to reimagine economic systems that actually address global challenges like extreme poverty, inequality, and climate change. So I think now more than ever, it's important to understand what these things mean. Again, this whole channel, uh, as I continue to lament every single week, is really just about it's about financial education. It's not just about real estate markets. Yes, that's the focus, but I think you have to understand the bigger picture so you can then work work your way up from so from a macro level all the way down into the micro levels of of you know city by city property markets. So it's important to understand the bigger picture here. Um, and you know, if we look now, what's happening? I mean, Justin Trudeau talks about you know inequality uh one of the things that uh you know we can certainly talk about is wealth taxes those will be coming more taxes on the rich but he's they're certainly not doing a good job at fixing this inequality problem uh during this pandemic in fact it's actually blown out to epic proportions as we can evidently see uh in the latest canadian housing statistics uh and these are mind-numbing figures you had Sales nationally, national home sales up 32% to, to record highs, record highs in October. Again, but this is a continuing theme. This is no longer the story of, okay, we had some pent up demand coming out of lockdowns in May and June and July. This is now, you know, we're, we're six months into this, into this, you know, wave of pent up demand. At some point, somebody has to say, this might just be the start of the next bull market. Now, again, I'm not going to sit here and, 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 Try to try to pump things up. That's never been what this channel has been about. But when when everybody was getting mad at me for the past you know six weeks, where I've been saying, hey, listen, like things are looking pretty good. I'm getting bullish on the housing market. It's not because like that's my, what my gut is telling me, or or what I want to feel about it, or how I think that it should play out. It's simply looking at the data. Uh, all you had to do was go back and look again, at what the Bank of Canada was doing with their QE programs, what the government was doing with their fiscal spending programs, and watching that transform. So let's take a look at mortgage residential mortgage credit growth in Canada uh, on a year-over-year -year basis, now humming close to 6%. These are back at the levels that, this is when, when mortgage credit growth <clears throat> was growing at this, last time it was growing at this pace, was when they brought in the mortgage stress test. They brought it in because they. It was never about oh, let's plan for higher interest rates. The mortgage, the, the mortgage stress test was always brought in to slow and to curb the credit growth. It was to slow the pace of house price growth. It was to slow bank lending in residential in the residential mortgage space. So we're now humming back to those levels, and that is the leading indicator for higher home prices. Is the pace of credit growth? Again, all you have to do is go back and watch my interviews with Professor Steve Keen. Who, uh, Richard Werner, all you have to do is go back and understand how the banking system works. Now again, this is, this is really what this channel is all about because as I have mentioned from day one, is, is it's really about financial education. I'm gonna read one of my favorite quotes. It is well enough, this is from Henry Ford in 1922. 
It is well enough that the people of the nation do not understand our banking and monetary system. For if they did, I believe there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning. Now again, it's, the system is designed that way. The system is not designed to everybody has a financial education. There's a reason that this isn't taught in schools. Because it's easier to, you have to have the workforce to continue to working and to buy things. The entire system, 65% of GDP, 65% on GDP is on consumer spending. So the system is designed to try to entice people to spend money. That's how you create, uh, you know, GDP. But obviously, if you're out there spending your money all the time on miscellaneous items, you're never going to build real wealth. But again, this system is not designed... Um, you can't have everybody learn the ins and the outs of the monetary and credit system. But if you can understand for what it is and looking at the residential mortgage credit growth, again, looking at the fiscal spending, we have a report out from uh, CIBC which shows there's nine, households are sitting on $90 billion in excess cash since the pandemic. So again, well, you can say, wow, this recession, everyone, everyone's getting you know, destroyed businesses are getting destroyed, there's economic pain, but they've flooded the system with basically helicopter money where households are sitting on $90 billion of spare cash. And the property market, which is a, 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 an indication of, of, of households and of bank lending is going up. So you have sales up 32% on a year-over-year -year basis to record highs. You have the national home price index up 11% year over year, 11%. Now, again, the home price index is hedonically adjusted. That means it, it adjusts for what the property type that is selling. So for example, it, what we're seeing now is you see all these larger homes that are selling, big single family houses, everybody wanting more space. This That would skew the average price, which I think the average price was up 18% year over year, 18%. But if you actually hedonically adjust it, for the composition of properties that are selling, we still have an 11% year over year increase, you know, 1% month over month. So basically, you have property prices are basically rising 1% per month. Now, again, show me somebody's wage that is going up by 1% a month. It simply does not exist. Um, so we look at that and we say, okay, well, now you have fiscal, uh, you have the $90 billion in spare cash. We're obviously entering into another lockdown. That's going to be some economic pain. But once you come out the other side, you have $90 billion. Once that economy reopens, that will get deployed uh, in, in via consumer spending. So I think you have the possibility to see a sharp rebound higher next year. You're going to see most likely um, a sharp I think you'll see an uptick in the inflation as well. Uh, the inflation in, this, in, in October actually surprised to the upside. Ironically, the largest component of the increase for inflation in October was due to the housing and shelter component, which contributed 0.19% to the inflation uptick. But again, can you imagine if they actually properly weighted the CPI basket to begin with, that the real rate of inflation is much higher than what is actually reported. Right now they're reporting sub 2% inflation. Now again, inflation, as I just told you, is in home prices up 11%. Uh, that's that's real inflation right there. That's that that's that's currency devaluation. Uh, you know, again, we can talk about great resets and on and on and on. But I think that's important to understand. And yeah, again, the, the biggest benefactors out of all of this has been the public sector. The public sector continues to grow, um, and that's evident in in the. Uh, in the in again in the, in the growth of the property market. The strongest property market in Canada. In Canada is Ottawa, where all the public government workers are working. Home prices in Ottawa are up 22% from last year. Uh, so you have this massive boom in the public sector as government continues to get larger, continues to um, you know have a, a larger and larger role in our lives, and people are 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 almost pleading for that um, larger government pleading. Uh, for, for them to take more control over their lives, pleading for more handouts, pleading for things like universal basic income, which I think 
it, again, it, part of this whole great reset could very well morph into this where the, these Serb checks become a form of universal basic income because you think about it practically, once you start giving out people, once you, once you start giving people money, it's so difficult to just take it away. Uh, and the one last thing that I want to touch on as well is, again, when everybody you know got all upset with me for these videos and saying, oh my gosh, this guy's turned bullish, what a shill, I can't believe it, how embarrassing, I'm gonna unsubscribe, unfollow, dislike, hit the thumbs down button, is again, this was all sitting there in the data. It's, this is not about human emotions. This is about listen. This is a this is this channel is about having a dialogue and a conversation and financial education and understanding what's happening in your life right now. Uh, you don't have to like real estate. I I told people on this channel 12 months ago go long Bitcoin if you want. I don't care. Go long go long gold. But both of those are in bull markets too. So. Um, it's really just, it's a currency devaluation. Uh, we looked at the data. Uh, in the Canadian housing market, again, it, this is something I talked about last week. I said, watch for this. I just picked up word that the we actually have, so right now in Canada, insured mortgages are running at record highs. The, in, the number of new insured mortgages in Canada are running at record highs. So what does that mean? That means, that tells me that when I look at this, that means banks are actively lending in the residential real estate market, particularly for insured mortgages because they are insured by CMHC, they are insured by the Canadian government. So it is essentially as close to a risk-free loan as possible. So why not issue credit? So if you have, um, you know, the Canadian government, we're obviously working with the banks, the bank account, everybody kind of working in conjunction, and they say, listen, we're gonna cut rates to zero. We're going to, you know, OSFI, we're gonna help you out with your capital buffers. We're gonna make some tweaks so that you can keep lending to people. We need to get credit out the door. One way to get credit out the door is to have the loans backed by the federal government. Uh, and this is one of the, the conversations that I had last week in that one of the ways you're going to see it uh, moving forward, and again, all part of the great reset and all these things that are starting to slowly change behind the curtain is you're going to see more, uh, you're going to see more government guarantees on bank issuance. Um, so this is something that's already been talked about in, in London, in the UK, where they are looking at um, more government subsidized mortgages, for example. They want to get first timers in the market. They need to keep the property market going. They're looking at these guarantees. And so I think you're going to see more guarantees. Again, how do you get realistically when you look at it and this is the problem with qe they're saying well it's not technically money printing it's just creating reserves it's basically the the, the 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 they're creating reserves in the bank's balance sheets and the banks aren't actually lending that a lot of that money out it's just sitting there one way to do that is to have them get government guaranteed so for example let's pretend that you are a bank so you run rbc bank um, you look at it and you say, well, uh, I'm in charge of telling my employees at RBC when and who and what to lend to. And I'm looking around and saying, well, we're in a pretty ugly recession right now. Why would I want to lend out a whole bunch of new business loans to companies that might not be around in six months or 12 months? The, the, the environment to lend um, it, it, you know, corporate loans, uh, particularly for small and medium-sized business, looks pretty dicey right now. So they don't actually issue new credit. So yes, you might have lowered interest rates to you know zero percent, um, but the fact is, if if the banks aren't actually willing to lend out that money, it doesn't actually help anybody. So one way to do that again is to have the government come in and make some guarantees and say, listen, like you issue you know Johnny's Pizza Parlor over there some money, we'll we'll 
we'll make it some sort of government guarantee that that loan, should he go belly up, will cover it. So that's one way to get credit out the door, and that's really what they've talked about. Uh, they're talking about in, in in all parts of the global uh, global economy is that we ha you know they have to get that. And again, another avenue of that is to impose deep negative interest rates and so you you say to the banks listen we're going to put a negative this is something Hugh Henry talked about in real vision we're going to put a 2 to 3% negative interest rate that is going to basically force banks to lend money we're going to force you we're going to hammer your reserves you basically you have to push that credit out the door uh, it's the same thing for people that are putting you know money in their bank account it's going to force you to spend and so all this money sloshing around is in the hopes to basically drive some economic growth um, and so this is the things that I think are worth paying attention to as we talk about great resets and looking and understanding what's happening in the policy space uh, because if you don't know what's happening in the policy policy space how can you properly allocate money and protect you know what you what you have as it is right now um, so stop focusing so much on your emotions and what you want or think might happen. Start focusing on the policy measures uh, that are clearly taking place right in front of our eyes. So hope that video helped. Um, we'll see you next week.